you need to accept fucking reality because if you do not acknowledge reality, it will, it will work against you. In any social interaction, there's kind of like two axes you need to think about. Number one, there's like a vertical vibe expansion. How can you create a feeling that makes people pay attention? You guys know what RAS is? You ever heard of that? Reticular activating system. What is that? Who can give a definition of that? Controls your selective focus. Controls your selective focus. Exclude things that are unimportant and focus on things that are important. So if you're out in a nightlife environment, it's a very chaotic, almost disassociative environment. People, like on a Friday night, say you go to a bar, people are drinking, there's alcohol, there's dancing, there's their friends, there's the lights, there's the music. And then if you attempt to go up and introduce yourself to that person and you simply go, what's up? <laughs> like, like what, what do you think is gonna be the reaction to that? Hey, what's up? Oh, I'm so glad you introduced yourself, sir. Um, I really wanted to meet somebody new tonight. So how are you? Uh, you, you how, how's your night going? Didn't, like, and they're now going to uphold 90% of the conversation with some stranger they don't even fucking know. That's not what's gonna happen. What's gonna happen? They'll walk away. They'll probably be like, oh, hey, and then, and then turn away. So intellectually, people know this, yet it, they do it regardless. What, now, why do they do that? Why is that? For one, they don't know what else to do, but again, I can tell them what to do and they still will do that. It's a willful ignorance of reality. So again, number one, you gotta understand what your goals are, but number two, you need to accept fucking reality because if you do not acknowledge reality, it will, it will work against you. Yet, people continue to do it. Sometimes they'll even, they'll even say, well, you know, that's just not me. Like I'll tell them to say, say or do something that's kind of like out of their comfort zone because social conditioning, cultural conditioning has taught us to be very careful with our uses of emotion. It doesn't matter what the emotion is, fear, sadness, joy, disgust, it doesn't matter what it is, it must be carefully controlled and carefully hidden. <laughs> to express emotion will generally result, it will not generally, but it could result in what? It could result in judgment, it could result in ridicule, it could result in censure, it could result in loss of validation, it could result in embarrassment, confrontation. So again, from the, you know, from a young age, your parents are like, in the restaurant, don't run around in the restaurant. Don't be loud in the grocery store. Sit down, shut the fuck up, be, be quiet. It's your parents, the media, possible religious upbringing, corporate culture, we're all affected to it to one degree or another. So the end result is as soon as an impulse to express yourself, either through the face, the voice, or the body, with a higher level of energy, like there's about to be, your mind will be like, there's about to be a change in the quantity or quantity of energy I'm putting out through my face, voice, and body. Boom, this could result in judgment. So I need to shut this down. Now, how does it, shut, how does it get shut down? I Physical tension. Generally, like the mind will call the body into, into play as its enforcer with some sort of physical tension. I think if there's one overarching tenet of social interaction in general, it would be that tension is the enemy. All right, just write that down if you're writing something down. Tension is the enemy, not just physical tension, but also like intellectual language-based densities as well. There's a tendency for the mind to elevate itself to this position of authority over the whole system. But unfortunately, the mind is in many cases not equipped to deal with these energies it's put itself in charge of. And the mind's not a villain. Logic serves you in 90% of your conversations. Probably more, right? Probably like 95% of the conversations you have are what? Some kind of information exchange. Even with your buddies. Like you meet up with your friend you haven't seen in a while, what do you do? You catch up. So how was Dallas? Are you and Sarah still doing the, the, the bake off or what, like whatever, that, it's gonna be an information exchange of some sort. So that will serve, logic will serve you very, very well in most of your interactions. But if you're trying to like socialize at a party, mingle at a networking event, it's basically gonna, people are just gonna tune out. Nobody takes a meeting to talk about something they already understand. So the second they can figure out, what, oh, it's one of these, out, done, okay? So very often when you come on like one of these, these bootcamp programs, I think a big part of the value of it is getting a very, it's put into stark relief how these delusions you've been harboring are, are incorrect. Because again, you can know that that's not gonna work intellectually, but there's a difference between knowledge and knowing, right? It's quite another to go up and do it and see the looks of disdain, well not even disdain, see like the complete lack of interest
and feel the emotions flooding your body as they turn away. Like it, that's quite another, that's a very visceral thing as opposed to this academic, you know, this, this intellectual exercise of th knowing it's not going to work. So I think for many people, that's like a come to Jesus moment. We're like, okay, it really doesn't fucking work. If you come on one of my programs and you apply the stuff I, I show you, you will be better pretty quickly than 90% of the population at meeting people, 90%. And that's not an exaggeration. That's just reality because the bar is so low. If you told a coworker of yours, say you're out at some you know, function and you're like, hey, go talk to that person. What's the likelihood they're gonna do it? It's, it's almost neg it's negligible. They, they will have to be browbeaten, cajoled, pushed, ridiculed, maybe fed alcohol and, and, you know, until they finally do it. Yeah. They will be petrified, utterly petrified because there's like a deep, there's some sort of deep seated thing in, in the midbrain that's like, yo, th this could result like humiliation equals death. Social humiliation equals death. I don't know if that's like an intrinsic learning, like some sort of a, like evolutionary thing from we came up in tribes or, or who knows, or if it's a learned behavior, probably both. But from our understanding of the brain, once like some sort of fear or anxiety trigger has been installed in the amygdala, it is indelible. It cannot be erased, which is a good thing from an evolutionary perspective, because why? You don't have to keep learning not to touch the stove, but not such a good thing when the so-called danger is arbitrarily related to reality. Because, you know, if some person you didn't know existed two minutes ago doesn't like your shirt or your, your, your sense of humor, what is like the quantifiable effect on your day-to-day -day life experience from that? Yeah. Zero. In fact, it's probably negative zero because it's, in, it's improving your life experience because the more data points that you gather when it comes to meeting people, the more you're going to be able to extrapolate various patterns that are, you're know, going to see the patterns emerge and you're going to start to gain references like, number one, I can, I can, you're going to change your relationship with the uncertainty for one. Number two, you're going to start to learn, okay, this, this kind of approach tends to work better. This kind of approach people don't respond to very well discard that, move towards this, right? You'll also learn to find internal reasons, internal validations to behave in the ways that would get better results. Because a lot of times I'll tell people, you know, behave in this way. They're like, but that's not me. I, I wouldn't do that. Well, it's kind of like going to a boxing gym and they're like, okay, we're gonna do some, some light work here. Okay, keep your hands up. Oh, that's not me. I, I'm, not, I'm not the kind of person that keeps his hands up by his face. Okay, well, here we go. Boom, and you're going to get the dog shit kicked out of you. Like, it, it's simply what's going to happen. You're going to have an, an unpleasant experience. And you're going to continue to have an unpleasant experience again and again and again and again and again and again until you find some internal reason to pee. Why would I put my hands up? Right? Why would I go up and express with higher energy? Why would I allow intuitive impulses to take over and stop being so logical and just free flow? Why would I start to say this, that, or the next thing? So again, number one, you gotta quantify the results you want. Number two, you have to come to grips with the fact that there will be additional demands placed upon your communication system in pursuit of those goals. And so you're gonna have to change the way you communicate. And, it's, and you're gonna have to kind of roll around with these energies that you may be n not super comfortable with. How many people in here have engaged with like YouTube videos about this kind of stuff for many years and simultaneously don't really apply it? Th it happens a lot. Like I, I got a guy in, on the program uh, last week in Las Vegas and he says, you know, I've been watching you guys for 10 years, but I, I haven't really gone, I don't really go out. It's kind of like, um, Watching like the UFC, like I watch UFC. I've been a fan of the UFC for, since the, the mid 2000s. Now I can fight. It's like, no, you, you're not gonna, you cannot fight. You'd be like, oh, that's a Kimura. That's a, da, da, da. like you might be able to pick out certain things, but once you actually attempt to physically enact, you, you're gonna be fucked. It's like, learn, it's like reading about downhill skiing or something. You can't read about it. You must roll around with the energies, these uses that you fear, and you must, again, familiarize your, yourself with them in four-dimensional meat space. That's the only way to get better. My life literally changed applying what I've learned and going through this process. I went from, yeah, scarcity mindset to like, I can't stop getting laid. <laughs> and never, things happened to me that I never would have thought were possible. And it's just the beginning, it's just the beginning. I also, you know, have so much more awareness of everything now.
and make a change or a correction. Just being in this vibe, in this tribe, really enjoying the journey. Yeah.